All right, we're going to zoom out and look at the labor market and how it's impacting the macro environment. For that, we're joined by Guy Berger, Director of Economic Research at Burning Glass Institute. Guy, thanks so much for joining us. So let's talk about the state of the labor market right now. Next week begins a new month. Typically on a Friday, we get the monthly payrolls report, but that will come the following Friday. What's the outlook uh, for the labor market as it stands from your point of view? Well, I think it's pretty good. I think you know, a year ago, we were just on the eve of starting to get these better inflation numbers that increased a lot of our hopes for a soft landing. You know, people started thinking, is the Fed going to ease? I think there's some debate about when it's going to happen, but financial markets are forward looking. And I think at some point that that more upbeat outlook um, is going to start filtering into hiring hiring managers' decisions. And you know, those that have been cutting back are going to maybe stop cutting back. Those that have been laying off are going to say, you know what, I've laid off enough people. And those that have been holding back and thinking, should we start hiring again, might start hiring more. So I think overall it's it's not an amazing picture, but I think it's a decent one. Yeah, so there has been a lot of strength in the job market. And then next week on Thursday, we do get weekly jobless claims, and that's considered a, more of a leading indicator uh, in terms of uh, the job market. But then when you think about kind of these waves of layoffs we've seen from last year, I mean, there was all these worries about the job market, and there's just been really a lot of strength in the job market. Where is the cracks? Where are the cracks in the armor that you're seeing? Well, let's start with this. I think this is a huge, we're in a big economy, you know, even in a year like 2023, that was, you know, it was the third lowest layoff year on record. And we still saw something like 1.6 million layoffs a month. Compared to that, the numbers that we're hearing about in these scary stories, I mean, they're in the hundreds and thousands. They're obviously tragedies for the people that experience them. But large chunks of the labor market are just kind of chugging along. I think if we do see more weakness um, is interestingly in parts of the labor market that have historically been the most charmed ones, the luckiest ones, people with advanced degrees. They're seeing their unemployment rate gradually tick up. The premium and pay that they get relatively with just a bachelor's degree is shrinking. Meanwhile, people that are that in the market, that just in the job market, that just have a bachelor's degree, they're probably not, no, I mean, it depends on the industry they're in, but for them, the job market just seems peachy. So it really does seem like, you know, I don't want to get too much into the, is, is there a white collar recession or not? But it is definitely sort of the, the top of the top as far as people that have historically done the best that maybe are getting a little bit of chill relative to what they've been used to in terms of the opportunities they have. And then let me ask you then specifically about um, the white collar uh, layoffs that we've seen. We've heard this term, it came from Meta, the year of efficiency, and we've seen that kind of ripple through the tech sector. Uh, and we've seen ongoing waves of layoffs in the tech sector. And, you know, even Meta, when they recently reported, talked about keeping up the momentum with that uh, quote unquote efficiency. Uh, is there expected to be continued waves of layoffs in the tech sector from your point of view? Well, I think there might be, but you know, the question is at some point, do these firms decide, you know what, even if I'm going to continue pivoting my firm, do I need to hire as well? Um, and I do think that, that the chances are that most of the correction in terms of, of um, you know, the number of heads is behind us. I think those, those are increasing. I think, you know, it's in the end, we can talk about, you know, why are these firms still laying people off when their stock price are doing so well at some point? This suggests there's room for profit, profitability and expansion, and I think it, ultimately these a lot of these companies, particularly the ones that seem like they have you know the finances to do it, are going to take advantage of that, um, and it just them determining what the growth areas are and hiring accordingly. And then who has the upper hand now? For a while, it was employees that had the upper hand. That started changing. Who has the upper hand now when it comes to the job market? Is it employers or employees, or is it a tug of war right now? It is a totally a tug of war. I think relative to what we were, you know, those of us like me that are old enough to remember the 20, early 20 teens, this is a much better job market than that. I mean, you know, the, the, the point is there were people that were having extreme difficulty ha having finding jobs out of college or out of high school that, you know, these days don't face that same challenge. But it's, it's also not quite as hot as it was in 21, 22, when I joke that you could walk out your door and five recruiters would, would ambush you and try to hire them for their companies. At the time, I think this is the kind of environment where people aren't getting as big raises as they were before. Um, if they want, for example, flexible work or remote work, they don't find those as readily. 
Um, and so in some sense, this is much more similar to the mid late 20 teens. It was definitely not a bad job market by any means, but it's not the, the, the spectacular red hot one where employers had employees had all of the bargaining power one or two years ago. And then, Guy, I want to ask you about wage inflation. Uh, Chair Jay Powell has talked about this before and that not being the stickiest piece of inflation. But what's your take on wages and wage growth? Is the expectation for us to see more cooling there? Yeah, I'd say there's probably going to be some cooling. I don't know how much more, though. I mean, if we're to, if, you know, if what I'm saying is right and that some of these things like hiring and quits, um, that have moderated over the past year, at some point stabilized, then it might be that we've seen the bulk of wage growth moderation that we were expecting. I still think it's uncertain. I think beyond that, I know Chair Powell is obviously very focused on it as a potential driver, but I, I guess I wouldn't put it past the possibility that that we that wages turn out to be less of a driver than inf than of inflation the Fed has thought, and we keep seeing January's data aside, we keep seeing the kind of relatively benign inflation numbers we saw in late 2023. And that, you know, wage growth, we really are entering a period, productivity growth is higher, where we can have strong labor market, we can have strong inflation adjusted wage growth, and it really doesn't push inflation up very much. I think that is something we should definitely look at given how strong the productivity numbers have been the last few quarters. All right, that sounds like a Goldilocks scenario. Guy Berger, so. Director of Economic Research, right? Uh, Burning Glass Institute, great information and insight. Also love the guitars. Thank you. Thank you.